G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. I am very happy to bring you the Tasmanian Devil Cake. Taz has been a favorite character of mine for many years. I have him on my set. I have a tattoo of him on my arm. I absolutely love him. I can't believe it's taken me this long to make him. If you wanna see how to make Taz Devil, stick around. After you printed your template from the Cakes by Chopper Facebook page, just separate them, place your detailed one over to the side. This is the one that we're going to use for our shaping and we're going to cut away the gray areas and then carve out those from the top layer of the cake. It's gonna be a little bit fidgety, but you can see from the shadowing where I want you to taper down. Now we can remove the gray sections and take them off the first layer of the cake. After assessing the height of my cake, I'm gonna go through and level off that top layer just because we don't want it so high, it'll distort all the details on his face. So we'll go through and just halve that and then we can work with what we've got on top. So once we get to this stage of the cake, you can see on the template, I've slightly grayed in this area and give it a little gradient. We're going to go and taper those pieces down and round it off to give him nice smooth edges. This is a little bit finicky, but it's gonna look great when you do the cake. This next part of the cake is optional. I'm gonna taper in my edges just a little bit and at the bottom, just cause I like that rounded look at the bottom of the cake. If you're not comfortable covering it with fondant, you just want a nice clean edge, then you can just leave it flat. It'll still look great from the top. However, it'll just have a bit of a blocky side. I've removed the top piece. I've secured that with a little bit of ganache. Now I'm gonna go through and fill that, place that back on and then cover it in ganache and give it a little bit of shaping. Because I'm working with some very delicate pieces up here, I've made sure my ganache is extra soft and it just makes it glide on a lot easier. This will still firm and give you that hard ganache that you're after that'll give you the stability. Now that I've got him out of the fridge, I've cleaned him up a little bit, just made the ganache a little bit smoother, ready for the fondant. There's a light tan color that is going to be the majority of his body. And there's a brown that's gonna be across the head and some details. To get these, I used a little bit of brown and a little bit of gold. And for the brown, I just used some chocolate fondant mixed with some white to lighten it up. Once I'm happy with the thickness, I'm gonna bring the cake into the middle and then work from the bottom up because we're going to trim away from the top. If you have any pleating that you want to avoid around the sides, just gently shift it up to the top because we're going to be trimming this part away and you can hide your mistakes that way. Be careful of getting any ganache on your fingers while you're doing this process because you don't want to mark the nice light tan. Now just go around the very bottom of the cake and trim away all the excess and make sure it's smooth and level at the bottom. For the middle piece of his mouth, we only really need to make sure that the inner corners, this middle part doesn't really matter because that's going to be covered with fondant. So we can put a little slit if you like, but don't cut too far. I'd say just a little cut like this and a little cut across. Just so you've got room to push and pull and just bring those corners out so you can put the detailing in. You can see by using the brush here, I'm just gently working that into the creases and it's not pulling on the fondant too much. Just be careful not to jab your brush into it because that will mark it. On the ridges of Taz's cheeks here, he's got these little hair bits that come out and overlap. I'm going to just place these on and then smooth them in. You can also take a lollipop stick and just gently work them down. And then later on, we'll go over it with the brush and smooth it a bit more. You do have to be very careful with this process. You don't want to push too hard. You're literally just trying to smooth that top layer in until it eventually melts right in. And then the brush going over it will help get rid of any of the slight imperfections that are visible. For the top of his head, we're going to roll out some brown and cover that and then work on the details. I'm going to trim that off to a nice edge. Then I'm just going to cover that top part and make sure it bends the way I want it to look on the cake. You want it to slightly overlap this flesh tone and we'll melt that in a little bit with a brush. We'll move on to his eyes. Make sure you've got your template and then you're gonna roll a ball of white fondant. We'll cut that in half and I'm just going to manipulate that while it's on the face. Make sure I've got the right sizing and just shape it to what is on the template. Same with the other side. Then we can take some black fondant. We'll roll an oval Measure it on your template once again. There's gonna be a lot of just measuring against the template for the right sizing. You're going to do his nose, his eyebrows, 
and the dots of his eyes and the little pieces at the corner. For Taz's eyebrows, I'm just going to roll a snake and have it taper at the end, cut off the length I want, and then I'm gonna just put a couple of little slits in the end, which I can then manipulate and make little points. Same with the other side. Then use two little round dots to give him some eyes. Now for his hair, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna roll a snake and then chop pieces off, taper the ends, and bring that up over his head to make it look like the hair. And we'll squish that down and basically melt that in. For his little devil horns here, you're going to roll quite a thick little spike, trim it at the bottom, and then at the side, you're going to go down about halfway and push in and make a cut. So you've got that little hair shape. And then depending on the angle of your cake, trim it. And then we're going to place it on just like that. There's another piece of hair that I'm going to put here just to fill in that space. Now it's time to move on to his ears, which we're going to just roll a ball. I get some pink fondant, just roll another, another little ball, place that in the middle, tap it down. Then we're going to just squeeze a little bit like this, give it a teardrop shape at the bottom, trim diagonally, and we're just gonna push them on. You can apply a little bit of edible glue to keep them on and just looking at him from the top, making sure they're in the right spot. To finish off his eyes, take a very small trim of black fondant and place those in at the sides. You're just going to lift up his eyebrow a little bit and place that on top. It's probably best to go through and do this beforehand, before you put the eyebrows on. So outline his eyes, then put his eyebrows on. To give his mouth a little bit of depth, we're gonna use this dark color for the background. We're gonna use this light mauvey color for the sides before we put on his nice big pink tongue. Just gonna use my finger to blend in the mouth where the cuts were, just to make it a little bit smoother so you don't see that detail. Now that I've blended that bottom piece in, I'm just gonna trim out as much as we can. Measure on your template how big it'll need to be. So we've gone a little too big. There we go. And just smooth that out. Roll this bit out and put it at the sides. For his tongue, I've just taken some pink fondant, rolled it out, and then trimmed it to shape and put a little crease down the middle. And then we'll just place that in the mouth. For his teeth, we're gonna take some white fondant and then I'd roll it out a decent thickness, then just use a cutting tool to cut diagonal triangles and then trim what you need because you do want them a little bit thicker than normal. And then I'd just place them in where they fit, making sure to keep the sizing. I would recommend doing the little teeth first and then placing the bigger ones on last because they're a little bit more fidgety to get around and just make sure you leave enough space. I'm just gonna shape the little teeth with my fingers because they sit a little bit further back. Now that his teeth are in and you're happy with those, you can go through and give him a few little creases in his mouth where he has these little um, lines on his cheeks. We're gonna place a little bit of white on his nose for the reflections. And then the very tiny little white dots that bring the eyes to life. I'm gonna add a little black petal dust and some cocoa just so it's not so strong with the black. And then go through and give Taz a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadowing, because you don't want it to be too dark, but you do want to have a bit of color on him. Now I'm gonna take a larger fluffy brush just for underneath here. And I've sort of stuck to the side. If you get a little bit of petal dust on the teeth, you can go through and just clean that off with a wet brush, but just wipe it a little bit off at the time and then clean your brush again. Now that we've finished applying the petal dust, um, just keep in mind that when you do that, you should have your cake completely dry. Let it sit for a couple of hours. It's been raining here, so the air's quite moist and the cake hasn't dried yet. But our last finishing touch 
is to get some black food dye. We're going to put two dots and just give Taz his little whiskers. There you go guys, you have your completed Tasmanian Devil Cake. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to stick around and look at the end card, there is a YouTuber that I've chosen to feature who I think is incredibly talented. Also, some more of my cakes if you want to check them out. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.